Uh, he was a student at Wittenberg. He studied under Martin Luther and Philip. And uh, he finally brought agreement about the, about the German Lutherans in the writing and publication of the Formula of Concord. Does anybody know what the Formula of Concord is? Pastor does. Not the book. Huh? <laughs> not the book of Concord. It's all about beliefs. Huh? We can believe in the book of Concord. So That's right. It's kind of about building blocks of beliefs and religion. This is a complete text. I believe it's the Concord of Reformation. <coughs> it's called the Lutheran Confessions. So it was him who put it together, published it in 1580. And at that time, something like 4,000 uh, pastors signed it, and a bunch of theologians signed it, and they said, we agree with this book. Okay? And this became our belief today. That's why we are Lutherans, and this is what we believe in. And this has the three creeds in there, and then everything that Luther wrote plus the Augsburg Confession, and uh, what have you today. Uh -huh. And this was the Formula of Concord, sometimes called just Concordia. This is the English version of it. And uh, there's quite a bit of Luther's books in here. And then it also contains the small catechism, the large catechism, all that we use today mm -hmm. in our Sunday school and our teaching because of this doctrine. This became the standard in the Lutheran Church. I thought you might find it interesting that at the same time that they were working on this in the 1570s, uh, they had a, the Catholic Church had a council, I think it was around 1565, 1570, in which they basically uh, agreed with much of what Martin Luther was objecting to, said he was right, and but by that time events had moved along to the point where they weren't interested in finding any kind of rapprochement. They wanted to be at odds with each other and it went on to the proliferation of many other Protestant that's denominations. That's what that happened with the, uh, now, compare that to and I'm sure you know this, in 1978 or uh, 88, in 98 or 99, in uh, uh, Frankfurt, theologians from the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in Germany and from Rome met, and the Catholic Church agreed that Martin Luther was right, justification through faith, we could have saved 500 years <laughs> what has happened since yes. they had just Absolutely. done that uh, at that time. Uh, right. 500 years. So this is the doctor, this is the doctorate standard of our church. You have a chance to read it sometime. <laughs> There's a lot of it you already know, but the Augsburg Confession you probably never read. <laughs> It'll put you to sleep. <laughs> okay. This is about Saxony. Saxony. Magdeburg is where this book was put together and published, and there's Wittenberg, there's Wittenberg, this is where uh, Eisleben, this is where Luther was born, Magdeburg, and this is where my mother was born. Two important places, huh? I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> just down the road. <laughs> just down the road. Wittenberg. <laughs> And then where is that relative to Germany? I don't know. This is Saxony. Oh, this is Saxony. Yeah, 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 we're in the north yeah. east or north east. west. Northeast, yeah. Northeast, yeah. okay. You see Leipzig down there? <clears throat> That's yeah. on the eastern border. And then you see uh, Potsdam up in the north. That's 
next to Berlin. Okay. And then where is that, the, since the Second World War, where is East Germany and West Germany? This was in East Germany. Okay. Was East. East and Germany went all the way down to Hof, where I lived for two years. One of the crossing mm -hmm. points was at Hof, mm -hmm. on the, uh, on the, uh, the uh, throughway that went from uh, Nuremberg to Berlin. And it was cut off there, and there was a point there, right on the edge. What's the northernmost section of uh, Catholic Germany? How far south did it go? I know Bavaria was Catholic. Yes. And uh, Austria. Well, but the uh, the southern portions, Munich was. That's was, Catholic. Was that's, that's, Catholic. In, that's in Bavaria. Yeah, was Catholic. Um, so the everything north of what would have been considered the see Freiburg that's in Bavaria, so that would have been Catholic. So Hof was in Bavaria too. What? Hof. Hof. Oh, which okay. is right on the Sully River. Okay. And that's where I lived for two years. Uh huh. In Hof. Uh, it's, uh, it seems and, uh, that was Bavaria. Okay, I have to get my historical atlas. Yeah, we, uh, Grace and I grew up with uh, High German. Our folks spoke all High German, so we understood mm -hmm. High German. Mm -hmm. When we went to Hof, they had their own dialect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Grace did all our shopping on the economy. We had a, we had a little PX because mm -hmm. we could shop in the PX. But the nearest PX was in Nuremberg, 60 miles away. So uh, she had to do all of her shopping and hairdressers and all that guy in Hove. Hmm. So she would go in and they started speaking. She would ask them to speak in high German and they would switch over and then she could understand it. <laughs> said, wow. Because they had some strange dialects. Mm -hmm. When strange you lived dialects. there, Nuremberg, you know, where they had the trials after the end yeah. of the Second yeah. World War, and where Hitler had the rallies before the Second World War. Was that considered to be part of Protestant Germany or Catholic Germany? I think it was all Catholic. So see, it comes that far north. Okay. About up to Nuremberg, that area. Well, see, mm -hmm. the whole yeah. lower end was the Roman Empire. Okay, one of the books I picked up, the book sale was the uh, mm -hmm. at Atlas of Mm. Historical Atlas of the Church. Okay. I, I think I see my dad's home. I, I see where Leipzig is, and yeah. to the left and up a little bit, I think is Halle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Halle there, that's, that was his hometown. Right. Uh, how far would you, looking at that map, what would you guess the mileage is to Wittenberg? Maybe 50 miles? I know he, when I, he was all around that area as a kid. Yeah. Up. What's that? Google. Yeah, of course. Let me get my Google out. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. It's fine. Have you had a chance to go back and see No, I haven't, and I would like very much yeah. to, but I haven't seen it. Okay, so the uh, father forced her mo his um, wife to move to uh, the U.S. She didn't want to leave. And he... He could see the handwriting on the wall. He had served in the First World War. It was gassed. He lived through it. He could see what was happening in Germany. That Hitler was coming to power in, uh, in the late twenties. And uh, he said, "I'm going to I'm going to the States." And she didn't want to go. He says, "Well, I'm going. And when I find a house and a place to work, I'll bring you over." And it was a good thing he forced her. Because after the war, Second World War, this all became East Germany. Yeah. Oh, boy. And they yeah. were treated horribly. Mm -hmm. I'm reading a book now of a woman who was born and raised in East Germany. It's a horrible book. It was a horrible life. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Um. Like 19 something, um, finally, um, Catholic, they get together and Catholic um, agreed 
Oh, 90% in agreement. There's some technical word of difference as to whether the body and the blood, acts, uh, whether the bread and the wine becomes the body and blood, uh, you know, at the communion service, or whether it's some other quote-unquote word which is so close, it might as well be the same thing. That's why I keep saying, we're right there. Well, well that's just like with... Um, the uh, Missouri Synod, they feel differently about the sacrament than we do. You know? Yeah. Well, my sister's Missouri Synod, she, she was saying the problem with why they don't like us to take communion with them is we think differently, that we really feel we're taking part in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And they don't, they don't. And the Christ, Christ comes to live. We were Missouri Synod, so. I don't think that's... I'm, I'm just telling you what she told oh, me. She <laughs> told me. <laughs> yeah, I grew up at Missouri City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was never in favor of that. No. You know, I, I know we're saying we're close to the Catholic, and believe me, I'm not a historian. I certainly don't know much about religion compared to many people in this room. Janine and I had an opportunity to travel back to New York in December, and one of the things we, we did was we went through St. Patrick's. 
And I have to say, that church and what they believe and, and Mary is, the, it's very, very different than the Lutheran church, to me at least. I mean, the experience in that church was certainly different than my experience in any Lutheran church that I've ever been in in my life. I, so we're, we're close, maybe, but... Could wow. you just say one instance of something where you saw a big difference? Sure. Uh, the statues. The statues, of course the crucifix. You know, every Lutheran church I've ever been in has a cross. Every Catholic church I've ever been in has a crucifix. And I, and I, and I believe that Jesus was on the cross. Please don't misunderstand me. But the things that... The way, the way Mother, uh, excuse me, the way Mary, the Mother of Christ, is portrayed. Um, I mean, they have a special section in St. Patrick's just to pray, I guess, with or for Mary. I, it just—it's so different to me. Catholics pray to Mary. It's to ask her to pray for them to God. They don't pray to Mary. Oh, okay. Mary is a yeah, human being. But the saints we, are all human beings. Okay, but we, we don't, ask them to pray for us. Okay, but we, we don't do that in the Lutheran Church. No, At least I, I mean, don't. Is that, is that, uh, is that different? Is That's that different. different. Uh, I mean, if you have statues yeah. and you don't have statues, is that different? Oh. It's different to me, I have to say. Uh, maybe it's because of my lack of knowledge, but it sure yeah. is different to me. It's, it's the <laughs> theology. Yeah, you know, it's just a feeling I have. Sure. I, it's, I don't know how to describe it other than that. They believe that the yeah. saints can intercede, and that if the saints pray for you, you know it's a, it's like being in the fast lane. Right. To I think go. we got a wrap, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank I, you. I know many of you in the room are familiar with uh, the fact that the Catholics and the Lutherans got together on October 31st uh, mm -hmm. in Lund, Sweden, and they signed a declaration accepting a common path. They didn't have. I watched this service. Did yeah, any of you did. watch the yeah. service? Yeah. It was really great. Screaming here. And there, yeah. yeah. So just the first paragraph of this, and then we... The leaders of the world's Catholic and Lutherans have signed a joint declaration mm -hmm. that an equanimic, equanimical prayer service commemorating the greatest schism in Western Christianity, stating that what unites the two traditions is greater than that which divides them. Pope Francis, who traveled to London for two days of joint events, told worshipers at the cathedral the Catholics and Lutherans had a new opportunity to accept a common path. Okay. Did you all get this piece that Pastor Steve yes. brought in here? Yes. Uh, this might be something some of you might be interested in. It's, uh, it's going to take place in St. Joseph the Worker Catholic Church on Sherman Way in Winnetka. And uh, the uh, Bishop of the Southwest Synod is going to be there. And the Ecumenical and Interreligious Religious Affairs Officer for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles is coming to be And they're going to be talking about, if I understand it, the things we've just been talking about. Yeah. Okay, people, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did get an Irishman question. Uh, Catholic man. Oh.